House Sitter, 1992. This was the film I chose for the latest week of my 20th century films. I see one a week. I've seen Steve Martin before in Planes, Trains and Automobiles and I really enjoyed it. It grew on me a lot. And this did the same thing. And this stars Goldie Hawn and she's brilliant in it. She plays the eponymous house sitter. Essentially she's a liar. She's a compulsive liar. She's a fantasist. She can make things up at the spur of the moment. That is what a lot of the humour is based on. Goldie Horn plays Gwen and when Steve Martin's character Newton Davis, an architect, first meets her, she doesn't speak English. He starts mocking her, making her name into words to amuse himself. Gwen, will I see you again? That sort of thing. A bit daft, but that's what people do. The film actually opens with Newton. He's driving his fiance, played by Dana or Delaney, who I'd not heard of before, but she mainly does television work. Now she plays Becky. She is being taken blindfold by car to see the house that he's built for her, being an architect, and he's gift wrapped it in a giant red ribbon. And outside the house, he takes off her blindfold and says, will you marry me? And she says, no. So then we progress a few years to this situation in a New York bar where he meets Gwen. Soon after he's mocked her, guessing that she wouldn't understand. Well, she does understand. And in the background, she starts talking in English with other staff. And at that point, he gets shocked. And it's like it's hurt his pride, his ego. And he's uh, when he's outside the bar afterwards, he sees Gwen and he has a slight go at her. He says, why did you lie to me? And she says, I didn't lie. I was deceiving you for what it's worth. She actually lives right above the bar they've been in, but she takes him on a walk around the neighbourhood. He leaves early in the morning after they have the night together, but he's revealed a few things about his life such as this failed proposition in a small town in Massachusetts called Dobbs Mills. I looked it up, it doesn't actually exist, but it's based on somewhere. I'm always fascinated to see where films are shot and found that interesting. Cohasset, that's it. I had it on my phone. She's miffed, but Davis has left silently. As so many one-night stands apparently end like that. Not that I've had any, but that's what happens, it appears. And it's the height of rudeness. She knows this is a small town. She catches a bus. She goes, finds this place, and she finds the doors open. She goes in. She introduces herself around the neighbourhood as Davis's wife. For most of the film, he's just called Davis rather than Newton. She creates a whole sham existence and it is kind of bizarre, a bit sad, but it's also hilarious. She meets Newt's dad for a start. She <laughs> says that she's his wife. There's all this little elements of humour. Then Newt turns up. He's not happy and she's ordered furniture. She's practically just living there permanently now. She manages to persuade him to let her stay there. She says she's been booted out of her place in Manhattan. They work out something symbiotic. They meet Becky again, both of them, and Becky's very kindly towards Newt and so he thinks he's got a chance to start fresh with her. If he pretends that she is his wife, it is really funny. I liked it just the same way as I liked planes, trains and automobiles. It is a bit dated. And there is this troubling element about people who can lie so convincingly. It's scary. And yet sad simply because what kind of life do they have? If they lie all the time, what's beneath it. There's no foundations. They can't build trust. Everything is a sham. That may or may not be the case with this film. Somehow she's got the quick wit to deceive everyone and figure out something where she doesn't get found out easily. I mean, she does get found out at times. She gets found out, of course, by Newton. She goes and meets his boss and persuades his boss to give him promotion. He turns up at the office and, and she's there talking to his boss, this community type situation. In real life, small communities, small villages, they tend to find out everything about you anyway. The communities I know in Britain, woe betide you trying to deceive anyone, it's not worth it.
The more people you tell when lying, the more people bear witness to the story, the more chances that holes will appear in the story. Going back to last week's film review, people get interviewed. More than one police officer will interview a suspect and they will check the record. If you tell a story twice, you may embellish it in different ways if you're lying. And then we have the courts with juries. I've been on jury service. I remember what an experience it was like sitting in a room talking through all of the evidence we'd heard from all of the witnesses. And there is no LGBTQ in this film, but of course there's that element that people before they come out often say when they do come out that they've been living a lie. And it feels like that. I mean, you do your best to hide it. It's a deep level of trust. You only tell so many people, although everyone's telling everyone about everything now. We've got the internet, we've got social media. I'm going to score this 8 out of 10. I really enjoyed it. Great comedy. Love to know what you think. Please like if you like this review. Thanks for subscribing. Hit that notification bell. I hope to see you again soon. Uh, Cajones, no, not Cajones.